All right, I'd like to call to order the January 12th, 2022 meeting of the East Hampton Historical Commission. First order of business I have is public speak. Anybody like to say anything that's not on the agenda? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, did everybody receive the minutes? You should have gotten them late this afternoon, so. Yes, thank you for. Yeah, just got them. You want a minute to review them or? No. No. <laughs> Are there any uh, edits, corrections, omissions? Anybody want to make a, any comments on it? No, I wasn't there, so I I don't want to comment. Oh, on it's it. true. We only have uh, two of us that are that were there at the meeting. So, do we have to postpone the uh, approval of those? It doesn't matter. I mean, I vote. I vote to approve the uh, <laughs> minutes. Well, I approve. I mean, I wrote them. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so well, they were a delight to read, so I will second the motion. <laughs> there you go. Uh, correspondence, we did we we didn't have anything, did we? Um, the 93 Northampton Street, but that's also... yes, the next next item. So there was nothing else besides that. No, okay. All right, request for comments 93 Northampton Street. Uh, as far as we're concerned, there's really not much there except an empty lot. So um, not a whole lot to comment on. Well, I wanted to point out, so there is an existing structure on that site. Um, it's the shed. I think it was like. Oh, for the, yeah, the golf, uh, the golf shed. Yeah. And to my eyes, it, it looks like a decrepit shed, but I don't know anything about the um about that and when it was built um but if if the i did take a look and there was no um there's no listing there's no inventory form on macris um and if you want we can pull up a google street view and take a look at it and um, you, do you have one from like 1930 of, of well I, we know what's there. google street view i mean no, no, no. <laughs> Wish. Um, you can you can pull it up if you want. Just grabbing it now. So it's um, this lot here from the East Hampton Golf sign to about um, this parking lot. Yep. Um, the shed, you can see this that structure there. Um, there's this, if, you, if you go over this way, you can kind of get a... So it's just it's just a small yeah. shed. No, I don't think that there's anything. Well, I mean, it's up to you guys to make that decision. But there's nothing. There was no inventory form for it. Right. I'm I'm just wondering if <clears throat> or how long it's been there. Did that come with the, with the <clears throat> driving range, or did they they put it up for that specifically? Which it's possible. I don't remember. What was there before? I mean, I'm sure there was probably some kind of business there before Burger King uh, and that. Because I, I know there's, I'm pretty sure on the plans that you're talking about, uh, like old water service and that kind of stuff. So, Yeah. And so according to the, did, it, did this change? Do you see the plans now? Yes. Or are you still seeing the street view? I see the plans. Plan. Yep. So the Burger King is this lot here. It's going to stay. Um, the gravel drive, the gravel pad's going to be removed. 
Um, you can see the sites being carved off from the rest of the larger property is just this black line. So it doesn't, it does not go far back to like the old canal area. Um, it's only, um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it doesn't go much past the, uh, the edge of the uh, Burger King lot, right? Exactly. So um, I can move that. Um, yeah, so so really won't go further than like what you see here in the, in the, in the this, the end of that pavement um, at the Burger King. Right, yeah. So that would be into the driving range anyways. Well, yeah, not necessarily. But. What what's the proposal for? Ah, now nah, somebody finally asked. <laughs> it is for a restaurant building um, shell, but it it's going to be a, a Starbucks, prim, uh, at least initially. Another Starbucks. Whoa! <laughs> that was the first one in East Hampton. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not a Dunkin' Donuts. You're right across the street, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and so this is the, the proposed site plan. Are they, are they planning on a, any type of light there? Um, it's kind of a nightmare on the one on uh, Northampton on King Street. It does not appear that they are doing any sort of traffic management, but I did not look at that part of their proposal. I know that they did have to do a traffic impact statement and traffic study as part of the process. Um, they may be required, you know, they're not proposing it, but if the, if the planning board determines that it's gonna be adverse, then, you know, they may be required to mitigate that either with a light or a uh, turning lane or, um, you know, there's a lot of different <coughs> options. Um, but, but obviously the, the applicant's not proposing that. The applicant's just proposing um, to stay within their footprint. It's already but, hard to get out on that street from various places. It's going to be interesting if this goes through. Yeah. Does the, the we'll just to divert the traffic down around the Starbucks and back out. Does the proposal so, state? So you, go ahead. I'm sorry. the 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 uh, the the dimensions of the building. The, yeah. So you can the width yeah. and height and. Yep. So this is their their plant planting plan. Um, okay. You can see um, just this gray outline. The proposed okay. drive-through restaurant is twenty one or sorry twenty two hundred and seventeen square feet. Um, so it's a small. 2,000 square foot building. It's 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 primarily a, a drive-through. I don't believe that they're doing much interior, um, like seating or. They got quite a bit of parking spaces, though. Yeah, that's an amazing amount of parking for a drive-through. Yep. Um, I believe that's what the ordinance requires. Okay. Um, and then this is the elevation. Um, so the, let's zoom in a little bit. Looks pretty similar to the one on King Street in Northampton, uh, just past the old, uh, car lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Does, um, the, the parking spots there on the, <clears throat> the, the, the ice cream place, the tasty top side? That primarily is that what I was looking at. Sorry, can you rephrase? The, the it looked like there was a lot of parking on one of the sides. Was that on the the uh, tasty top side? Yes. So that uh, that's, that's right down. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wasn't sure. Is that another outbuilding over there in the the upper right hand corner? I believe that's their dumpster pad. Ah. Okay. And the the other building that's on the Tasty Top land, we you know the probability of that having any significance is low, right? We don't think 
I mean, just from looking at it, it looks pretty much like a building purpose built to hand out golf clubs and golf balls and maybe sodas. This, this one. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's nothing that would give us reason to suspect that like, oh, that was where candle making was invented or something crazy. I, I don't think it's that old. Uh, I may be Does wrong, it, but I don't I don't know what was there before, if anything. I, I, looks I just really like can't remember. Oh. Yeah. Remember? Yep. Beverly? Yeah. There was anything I don't, there? Uh, no, I don't remember. I just remember the driving range. Yeah, it was yeah, it was always seemed like this was kind of empty, I think. Although there's probably you know a house or something here at one time. It was and probably it, farmland for uh the yeah. house next door. Yeah. It looks like it's setting on a concrete pad that would suggest it's not like it was ever a home or anything. Right. Yeah, so yeah, and I, I, I think John, that your your assessment about the concrete pad, um, you see, it's kind of like larger than. It looks like it. What there might have been a structure that was there that was then removed. Yeah, and it wouldn't have been. It would have been like a garage with a pad like that, not not like a home. Right. Um, so I'm just checking right now um, is the property card um, for the building and, and we don't have there's no record in the property card of of what the um, of, of what that shed is when when that shed was built um, so Oh, like as far as we know, there's no, there's no secret lower level to that shed that leads to a some room downstairs <laughs> from the 1820s. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it could be, but I have no no way of knowing that. Like I said, it's not it's not it's never been inventoried as part of the um, like the survey and planning grants or anything like that. Um, so there's no indication that it's older than 50 years old, but there's no indication that it's younger than 50 years old either. So um, if you want to make the applicant go through a demolition delay hearing, um, you know, that and, and make them prove that the building is younger than 50 years old or, or not, then and that's your choice. Um, or if it's something that you look at and think that it's, just not historically significant then make a we'll make we can make a motion of that and pass that along to the applicant and then they can be done with the um this part of the permitting is, is the starbucks a done deal or are they just checking no, they, this they, they they're um applying to the planning board for a special permit and as part of that special permit process, the planning board reaches out to any and all other city agencies that would have, that could have a potential interest in this parcel. Um, a so special on. permit because of the size of the parcel? Nope, special permit because the zoning requires all restaurants, drive through, whatnot, to get a special permit in the highway business district. <clears throat> Well, I'm I'm okay with saying that you know for myself I don't see any indication of why we should put a pause based on that building. The building doesn't appear to be you know set off any flags or anything like that. Other... A, did you look at the property card, uh, Jamie? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that there? I can pull it up here. Well, it says 1995. Where do you see that? So this is for 93 Northampton Street. The, the lower, uh, yeah, lower second card, outbuilding, yard items. Oh, yep, yep. Shed with electric, 1996. Yep. Okay. Okay. 
so I was looking up here under the AYB approximate year built. Yeah. Because that's typically where those the, those. Oh, yeah. Days. Right. Right. Yeah. So, just, yeah, I was looking at, at the outbuilding. So, yep. Um, so, so it's not that one. You know, it, it looks like it was could have been built any time in the last 50, 100 years. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah it's, probably, it's probably done for the driving range. That's I, I what I was going to say. It's probably when they started the driving range, they built it so you could pick up your golf balls. Or we, Do you remember uh, there used to be that octagonal building there? I the don't remember. You don't remember that? No. It was kind of this, it was a used car lot for a little while. I don't there, remember. Was, there was an octagonal building, and I think they started, when they were doing the golf, they started using that building for the, for the you know, for the office, for the driving range. And then they, and it was, it, it went through a couple different things. And then they, uh, they tore it down. It was like located, uh, that kind of yellow spot that's uh, to the right of the outbuilding. Where it's kind of flat, and you can see like a little circle. Hmm. Right there. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I just, it, as I was looking at it, it just kind of popped into my head. It was like an octagonal or hexagonal building. That I would have, you know, I would have been more upset. That was kind of cool looking. This this is just looks like a shed. Vintage nineteen ninety six. We're gonna have a Starbucks with a view. Yeah. Beautiful view. Yes, yeah, it is a nice view. And I hate to be obtuse, but <clears throat> if I could ask for just a little clarification in that I, I I didn't really catch though, Jamie, your answer to Bev whether the Starbucks was just one of a number of possible plans, or is specifically that purpose uh, locked in? Um, so they are applying for a, the use of drive-through restaurant um, retail uh, restaurant with drive-through. So Star Starbucks is or someone else's. Um, someone else on, uh, you know, so cause it, they, the way they do this often is they have, um, some, they, they contract to a builder or they contract to a local person who takes on the project and then Starbucks either buys it at the end of the project or leases it from them to own it, to, to run, to run their operations. Um, they take on less liability and, have less employees and all the rest of that. Um, so it is a done, it, it's the, the, the intent of the applicant is to have it become a Starbucks. Um, that being said, that being said, once, once it's built and permitted, if, you know, they decide to sell because they're not doing well and a Wendy's wants to come in, um, you know, and a Wendy's is the same use category that they could just take over that building and that lot without any further permitting. Um, if it were to change use to, let's say, um, a, a, a yoga studio, that would require new permitting because it would be, that's a substantially different use. Great. Yeah. Super. That's just just the clarity that I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, do we need a motion for this? Um, I think you know if, if you. I think it's the 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 comment. They're they're asking for comments. So the comment is that the building is not historically significant. Then. I don't know if you need a motion to submit that comment, but if you if you'd feel more comfortable that you got you know a, a motion on the record that you can point back to, then yeah, why don't we do that? Can we get a motion to, to uh, declare that the building is not historically significant or the structure? 
I make a motion that we declare the, the building at 93 Northampton in question is not in need of historical protection. Second that motion. Second. Really second. Okay, all in favor, we'll do this as a roll call. So, uh, Nora? I, yes. John? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Chair votes yes. So that's four to zero. I need of, let me take a note here. All right. Uh, item number six, demo delay bylaws. Have we had any motion uh, movement on that? I'm so sorry. I worked <laughs> on it a bit and then. Um, so I know it's, it's been crazy the last couple of weeks. So, yeah. Um, so, but I, I am close. I did get significant progress on it. Um, so, hopefully, uh, the next meeting I will have a, a, a draft for you all to look at. Okay. Next meeting. Okay. Uh, item number seven, vacant properties ordinance. Uh, what do we know about this and what's the, uh, what's the status of it? Okay. So I just heard about this. Um, it was in the newspaper. Um, and the EDIC, the Economic Development Industrial Commission, has been working with um, the ordinance subcommittee to create a vacant properties ordinance that would basically require owners of vacant property to register their buildings with the city um, and pay a small fee to basically have a vacant building in the city. Um, what that does is it encourages property owners to rent or have some sort of use going on in their building um, that would not be, um, that maybe they would have passed on otherwise. Um, yeah. They can also choose to, um, in, to, to put some sort of um, art or something like that in the windows um, to sort of make the structures less um, of an eyesore. Um, there was a draft ordinance that um, that went to the, the I guess that, that they're discussing it. So I just sent it to the historical commission because I know at one point in time, um, the idea that there was like so the demolition delay ordinance would would be paired well with a demolition by neglect ordinance. Mm -hmm. And the demolition by neglect ordinances typically resemble this vacant properties ordinance where you basically have a, you pay a fee to register your vacant building. Um, and um, it just encourages property owners to clean up their building, keep it, keep it functional, not, not let it just fall apart because they're, they have to pay a fee to the, they, you know, they're paying the city money to keep their building vacant mm -hmm. and and um, sort of unsafe, or they can put that money into the building and um, you know start to make repairs or things like that. I, I read the ordinance. I read read the ordinance a while ago, and it didn't seem like the fee was substantial enough for them to bother doing anything with their building. I had the it was same. Only, it was, yeah, it was only like $100 or something for the year. It was a, a ridiculously small amount. Yeah, I think it was $100 quarterly. Well, um, that's still not much. If and, it, got... and, it's, and it's only for commercial. It, does not, it is not for residential buildings. So it would not apply. So this is sort of the, the, the thing, because it's coming from the EDIC, and they're, they're looking at it from vacant properties in the downtown um it has a slight well, difference from what maybe the historical commission would be looking at um but given that this process is going forward if, if there were comments or things like that that um i would encourage you the historical commission to 
to start attending some of these ordinance subcommittee meetings, or at least talking with the members of the ordinance subcommittee, um, if if that's something that you all feel is a good synergy and use of of, of your time. I agree. I think the hundred dollars is is a low fee, and um, you know that's something that they would probably. It, in reading it, I think that didn't the hurry and scurry building come up? And um, I think I sent a comment wondering if we hadn't already given them permission to take the building down. Didn't that come up a while ago? And the building's still there? They, no, they were looking for some kind of use of the building, wasn't there? Some kind of repairs or something? They are, um, they, have, they have come before the zoning board and the planning board. They have approved plans to demolish and reconstruct that building uh, okay. to make it retail on the first floor. And then I think two, three or four units of, of housing on the second floor um, or third floor. Um, and the building has been condemned by the building commissioner. Um, the roof is collapsed. I don't believe that there is any reasonable way to save that building, even if um, yeah, people, were, people were interested in doing that. But, but it's still there. I, I thought we had given them permission to demolish it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the applicant is slow. I mean, I, when I started working here over 10 years ago, the, you know, I, one of the first things I did, we had a meeting with the owners of the building and they're like, oh yes, 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 I have, a, I have plans. And he pulled out, a, he pulled out a, a, a set of plans that he had drawn up in like 2002. So um, it's, not, um, it's not moving quickly. But, 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 but at, least, at least now the plans are fully approved. Back then, the plans were just like plans that hadn't even gone through any sort so of... The, so this would be one of the buildings that this would apply to if he delays this for a lot longer. Correct. And, and the, the thing that I thought was more powerful about the... Um, and I forget what city it was modeled after they mentioned... Um, was that the, the process means that if you fail to acknowledge or register, as they put it, then you're uh, susceptible to a $100 a day fine. That has teeth. That has and, teeth. And what I would like to do, and I, I appreciate the recommendation, Jamie, that uh, we should, and I hope I uh, can manage to, to, to talk to them, would be that, you know, to me, I think the, the registration shouldn't necessarily be a penalty, especially I feel like, you know, we've got some downtown buildings where I quite sympathize that they may have had a lot of people who suddenly up and left, and there's no reason to penalize uh, a building owner for that. But what we as a historic commission would like to see is a very effective penalty for those that are just leaving an eyesore decade after decade or demolition by neglect, those things. And, and the $100 a day kind of thing, that to me, that would incentivize somebody to get your butt in gear and get something to happen. But, you know, I, I would almost propose maybe that rather than a $100 initial fee, they even are incentivized to register because then what we could do as a town would be to help them either, you know, hey, you know, uh, City Arts is uh, looking for a, a place. Uh, you want to open it up to that? You get a bunch of people in the building that might say, oh, man, look at this great building. It's, it's, it's available. You know, something that incentivizes them to participate, but that in the process of participation, it also means... If you don't participate, if you if you just say no, I'm not going to do it, and you have a building that's falling apart, that we start fining you a hundred dollars a day. So I I would promote things like even you know 
for a building owner that's never had an incident before, it's like, hey, hey, the first the first year is free kind of thing, right? You know, not trying to penalize you for losing your renters, but that for people that are going on year after year and decade after decade, that there's something that's like, yeah, we're we're gonna disincentivize that. Um, yeah, and I guess there's, um, so what I'm, what I'm seeing is, so like the, the registration fee requires you, you to then maintain the building as if it is occupied. Um, and then if you don't maintain the building, um, and the building or it becomes, becomes, becomes condemned, um, then you have to pay the registration fee and you can't be eligible for the public hardship or the hardship or the public art exemption. So I think it's, it's really, it's a, it's a light stick to, um, to encourage property owners to, to rent their buildings. I, I, um, I don't know, John. I, I think that it's... Um... Yeah, we, we should talk to them because from their angle, they're only trying to incentivize business owners and we're trying to prevent <clears throat> demolition by neglect or the loss of significant properties plus not wanting eyesores or people to think, oh, East Hampton is a ghost town or um, things like that. In fact, I'd even support or suggest to them maybe for those people that are working on something and the building is empty and looks maybe abandoned, maybe there's even like the CPA is doing, maybe there's a banner or something we can have for people that they can stick in the window that's like, no, we're not neglecting it. We're just in process and yeah. let people feel. Uh, you know, <clears throat> oh, good, they're doing something. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it, um, I think there's a lot to talk about here. Um, but again, because it's, it's sort of going through a different board, different process than, than just the historical commission. Um, it's sort of, you know, I, I guess the, options could be for, for the historical commission to write a letter um, supporting and encouraging changes as, as we've talked about or or to just go to these meetings and, and represent the historical commission verbally so um, but it, it seems like everyone here is sort of on the same consensus that mm -hmm. yeah. it, it could be strengthened and um, What's the, uh, the timeline on this this whole process? Do you believe? Do you, do you have any idea? Um, let's see. Um, don't know when it's meeting next. Um, so it was in the eleven seventeen city council packet which sent it to the subcommittee. Um, I've been eyeing the ordinance subcommittees, like agendas and minutes and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, but, but often they will keep the, um, they keep everything that they're working on just as like a list, sort of like the historical commission. So you, so you don't know necessarily if they're actually gonna have any talk about it because it's just on the list. Um, but their next meeting is tomorrow night and they don't have it on the list. Their agenda for tomorrow is just committee reorganizational meeting and election of chair and clerk. So, um, so it's not gonna, the January 13th meeting. It might be um the meeting after that as soon as i see as soon as i see it on their agenda i will forward that agenda to the historical commission sounds good um so we'll, we'll just keep it on the agenda as we, we move forward with it anyways so like next month we'll, we'll be back up there great 
Okay. John, did you have something you wanted to say? No, that's okay. Oh, you, can, you can talk, John. No, I, I, I just, I basically was just going to ask, <clears throat> since we do feel not only that we want to encourage it, <clears throat> but we want them to maybe, I was thinking the way I might word it was, and I was thinking if we were sending a letter, um, that what we would be asking them to consider is that it may be a good coupling. I don't know the, the best phrasing here, but like you were saying, JB, Jamie, with the, the idea that we are trying to protect buildings as well, so that there's two objectives that might be accomplished with this one ordinance. And I didn't know if maybe given, I can't say right now whether I can make the meeting or not, and just in the concern that if none of us could make the meeting, would a letter be a nice official, hey, we, you know, we want to encourage it, we think maybe it doesn't have enough teeth, and we're saying that because we think it might couple well as a single um, ordinance that covers two objectives for the historical commission as well. Yeah, I think I think that having a letter would be good as well. There's, I mean, there's also once it goes through the ordinance subcommittee, it will have a full public hearing in front of the city council. But usually, by the time that happens, it's usually too late to make significant changes. Um, usually, all of the sort of significant modifications and whatnot happens at this lower committee level. So. Um, so yeah, so, so if, if someone wants to write a letter, um, to the, to the ordinance subcommittee or the EDIC, um, on behalf of the historical commission, then, um, maybe, maybe that'll just sort of cover the basis in case people can't make it to the meeting. What, what did you send Jamie to us? Um, I sent an email on December 23rd. Okay. So if you look in your emails, you'll see it. Um, Let's see who send it to Mike or Michael? I think I send everything to both because I'm never sure which one you yeah. actually use. I, Sorry, well, I you actually use both, but yeah. you know, one's obviously work. So sorry for spamming you. I have I have problems with people's emails. Sorry, John. As oh, well, no, it doesn't doesn't you know that way. If I see it two places, you know, sometimes I ignore things. Yep, I definitely ignore things. If you send something to my personal email, I might look at it in 2024. But if uh, you send it to my work email, I'll get to it. You know, within a week. See, I don't, I don't see it in my personal email. So you probably just sent it to the working one. I sent it to Mike Zurich at gmail.com. Really? Yeah. On the, on the 23rd? Yep. I also sent it to your East Hampton. I sent it to both. Is the Moriarty and Moriarty building right there on the next to Big E? Is that building vacant? I've never seen anyone go in or out of it. It looks vacant to me. I've I've circled it. Yeah, I've been around it. With, yeah. with that question in mind, it, it does appear to be vacant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's there's all these like questions too about like what can sit, what what is a vacant building? How do you know like how much use is vacancy? Um, you know, so if Moriarty and Moriarty are using it to store files, and they're just like a big file depository, like big file is that, cabinet, <laughs> uh, is, is, is that considered vacant? I, I don't know. Um, I think for the historic commission, it's not a threat to the building. Right, but it but it is inappropriate for downtown use. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, I found it. That's where I would think that's where other <clears throat> committees have have more of an interest, perhaps at that point, because we swap out where we're like, well, whether they're storing files or not, if the building's being maintained, you know, the plumbing isn't breaking and destroying the place, then historically we don't have a gripe. Right. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So we're going to keep uh, an ear to the ground on that whole process at this point. And if somebody wants to send letters, we're, we're yeah, I could not, work out something. It. Yeah, if you would. Yeah, maybe if. Uh, yeah, and and maybe I could then run it past some people that can make it appropriate for um, government work. Yeah. Um, and if you want, um, I don't know, it, it's a chicken and egg thing. Some committees will kind of make a motion to let someone respond on behalf of the committee without having seen the final version of it. And others want to see the final version before they give the motion to send it along. Um, and other committees aren't even that formal. So that, that they do motion. So up to you guys how you want to proceed. But if if you wanted to give John I, I, I wouldn't mind sending it and endorse uh, or reading it and endorsing it, John. Yeah. So I can just send it to the whole group. I, I was just going to put together like a paragraph that basically just said what I said to all of you. Right. And then thought between maybe Mike and Jamie and everybody, we can make it, you know, with the proper legalese and ducks in a row and, and then send it on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a letter of in intention than, than any specifics. Well, it, it doesn't sound like it's going to be coming up again for what, till next month anyways? Yeah, I just went back, look back. They, they typically may meet once a month, the ordinance subcommittee. Yeah, um, but some months they do have a second meeting, and my guess is since this first meeting will just be an organizational meeting, they may they may meet again in January. Okay. Um, probably not for two weeks or so. Well, that would already be towards the end of the month, anyway. So, yeah. all right. Yeah, uh, John, uh, that I, I like your idea, and just yeah, just. Uh, forward it to everybody and we'll uh, take it from there okay i think uh item number eight i think we we already beat to death but uh, there's a couple of people at this meeting that weren't at the last one so uh do you want to do you want to give the same speech as last time jamie well, it's done <laughs> it's done <laughs> yay <laughs> um we have uh received the final report um and we have a digital copy of it available on the um, on the website. So I can bring that up now. Share. There we go. Oh. Oh, nice. Historic architectural survey. That that sounds pretty fancy too. Right. <laughs> so I'm just gonna scroll through very kind of silly, but if people want to take a minute, just tell me you want to stop and read. Otherwise, we'll just look at the pretty pictures. So anybody can access this now, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, in addition, um, we have the um, the Macris database, with which will have um, all of those new forms will get added to it. Mm -hmm. um, so the report is kind of a a basic report um it's not really the the uh 
it's a product of the of the uh, survey and planning grant, but the, the the actual larger product was the all the inventory forms that they created, um, and they are not yet added. So, you know, we're kind of waiting on Mass Historic to to update their systems. Mm -hmm. It's still quite exciting. It looks great. But I think the, the last one was like 12.05 or something like that. Yeah. Um, so let's just go great. through. We'd want to take a look. Um, a copy of this report um, will also be at the library and then in the Historic Commission's files, along with the copy, one original copy of all of the inventory forms that are in hard copy. Um, so let me, while you have you here, I'll just um, do, I'll show you a couple of the um, inventory forms that they created. Let's go with. So this is just a representative form from uh, Chapman Ave. Maybe we should get them to update all our old forms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would, it would be nice. It'd be probably pretty expensive, but. <laughs> we, did, we did 100 for about $35,000. No, twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars, yeah. Um, a, little, a little less than that, right? Yeah, a little less. So we'd have only about a thousand to update. So, um, well, they wouldn't have to do as much research. <clears throat> they, I mean, they they had to do. I, they did. They did a lot of research. Um, you know, then. That's that's really nice, though. I mean, that's a lot yeah. of information there. At least, you know, you might not have it all right in front of you, but you still know where to look for it. Yeah. A lot of different views, too. Yeah, so that's nice, is that they have a lot more photos in each of these um, inventory forms than what we've seen in the past. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at uh, some in inventory forms from other towns and, you know, areas, and it's like, some are really well done. Others are, you know, they barely tell you the address of the place. And, uh, you know, yeah, this house is here. Okay. <laughs> That's it, you know. Um, this is one of the forms that they redid. So this is the, the button building. Mm -hmm. um, so that was already a form that we had, but I think it was an older form that didn't have a lot of information in it. Um, Some where they were able to get some historic photos, they they did. Yep. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. This this is this is kind of what the state is looking for now with all all these records, right? Yes. So I can, I can remember when we started the first inventory forms when the commission was first started, and we. And this was way before digital. We'd go out with our little cameras and take the pictures, and we'd have to do all of the research um, in the Hall of Records in Northampton. Yeah. And uh, it was just people on the committee doing it. This is great. We're, you know, people are paid and um, are really well, yeah. their specialty, not just local folks trying to get something together. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I I'm happy with it. Like everybody else is. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Ready Absolutely. to do it again? 
Yeah, I think it's money well spent. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was, it was certainly long overdue. And uh, I think, you know, you have to thank Jamie a lot for this too, because it really helped get it going. If you weren't around, it probably wouldn't have gotten done as yeah, far as you. Know, thumbs, thumbs up, Jamie. Yes, yes, Jamie. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. Um, it was, um, you know, shepherding it through was a, a little bit more difficult because of, you know, we got the grant right at the beginning of COVID, and then it was sort of like, what do we do, and how do we do all this? So, um, and we and we we did complete it just just in the under the wire. Um, actually, we got the reimbursement from the state um, last week, so nice. so it is fully fully complete. Um, Perfect. And um, yeah, you, know, you guys can go back to the CPA committee for more money and say, "Look at the great job we did." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, at least have something to show for it. You know, a lot yeah. of times you don't. You know, you don't and have can we that be- kind of thing. Can we have more money and redo the old forms? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, there, there's a possibility of having some, and Shannon do some of that, I would imagine, right? Yep. Shannon is doing um, for about $5,000. She's doing um, the, um, sorry, the, the park, right? The, the park building, the, um, Cemet- and the cemetery. What's it called? Um, the Civilian Conservation Corps building on, on a daily field, um, okay. the, the bathroom, um, and also doing the Brookside Cemetery and the Brookside Cemetery. I guess it's like temporary internment building or yeah. something like that. They put uh, bodies there in the winter when they can't bury them. Right. Um, so that that's about five thousand dollars to do those three. Um, it's expensive work to to go back and do it, and um, yeah, I think that we, um, you know, it's something that I personally did not have the expertise for. Um, working with Mass Historic was incredibly helpful. They they really, you know. It was weird. I mean, it's, it was our project, but they really took the lead on making sure that the the applicant, that the the consultants were doing the right work and and getting the right materials and filling out the forms properly and being consistent and in, in, in ways that I would not have picked up on. Um, so I, I would be hesitant to try to complete more inventory forms without working with Mass Historic or without working with a consultant that really knows Massachusetts. Right. Um, so, you know. Well, down the road somewhere. Um, and I guess that the final, the final piece of this project is just filing. Um, and, and I guess now is a good opportunity to figure out with, with you guys how how do we want to deal with this? I have a box right now on the back of my big file box there. Um, it's just full of the inventory forms. Um, so how, how do we want to file them? Do we put them in the files? Should I just put them all in like a few folders or make them one file for each? Do we do it by street? Uh, I know Beverly, you were interested. You were you had started sort of a filing reorganization project prior, just before COVID. So, um, yeah, it was all by street at that point in time. And then this originally it was by street. And then when uh, what's her name did that next series, um, she did it by area, right. And within the area, of the street. So it's very confusing. So I don't know how it should be reorganized if we did it just by street. Well, because yeah. there, you know, there's like a Mount Tom area, and there's a, a different areas that it was organized by. Unless we did a, a dual one where we have it by street, 
and another one where we um, copy the files and have it by area. Yeah, my, my guess would be that we don't really need twice as many hard copies. Yeah, probably not. Um, like the way we would normally be looking it up, right? So organizing by street would be the one easy way that could just cover it all. Do it. Alphabetically, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that would probably be the easiest way. Um, I, I, I wonder if the, the previous person you were referring to, I mean, Macris is kind of sets it up all by, so you can search by kind of a neighborhood or area. And I wonder if they were kind of going for the same thing as that. Yeah, what was her name? Margaret, uh, who, who did that second, the, the first batch was done by people on the committee. And then she was hired later to fill in more areas that hadn't been covered. And she yeah. did it a little bit differently. Hefner or Hefner or something? Help, help, help. Hepler. Yeah. Hepler, yeah. Yeah, that I suppose, like you said, the easiest way is alphabetically by street, and we'll be we'll, at least we'll be able to find them, or anybody would be able to. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely don't have time to go and do that entire re no. refiling project, no. um, but I can like take the existing. I can take the new forms and slip them in, or I can keep them all separate and just have like a third. You know, we'll have a third filing system for just the new forms do that too yeah. um, you know for right now anyways you know until for right we... for right for right now until you know it sort of opens up in town hall a little bit more yeah but if anyone wants to come in you know we are open to the public um so if anyone wants to come in during you know regular workday hours um and work on work on that uh, be happy to um, work with you and help you. I don't know. Beverly, I'm looking at you because I think you're I the only person you who, has, who has work day hours. <laughs> um, I'll think about it. Let me know. Okay. Um, everyone, everyone's masked in the building. Um, so that shouldn't be a concern. Right, and only half the people are there right now, anyways, right? Or, or yeah, limited right. staff. Yeah, and and no one's using that conference room, so it's not like it's um, you 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 would be the only person in there. To... Okay, I'll, I'll buy my lonesome. Well, for better or worse, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, how about an update on the canal project? Um, are, we, are we at the same same place we were last time, or are we a little bit ahead of that now? We're moving forward. So okay. they um, hired the consultant. Um, uh, it was the um, SCWA. It used to be New England Environmental, but then they got bought out um, recently. Um, and um, <laughs> we're PVPC is working on contracts with each of the municipalities to go forward. The, the, the bid price came in much lower than expected to do the work. Um, and so they're going to get started soon, um, starting on doing this, the architectural reconnaissance and the, um, archeologi the archaeological reconnaissance and um well you're, you're in the dark now <laughs> um we have a meeting next week um the, the the canal working group has a meeting next week so no more but it's sort of um the boring part of the project of just like contracting so yeah that's good i'm glad you know we got that going Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's it's kind of a big step once you know got moving. There's no there's real no no real hard deadline on that, right? 
I mean, it's not a grant, so there's really no. Um, I believe so. The, there's not. It's it's funded by different communities, CPAs, yeah. um, and PVPCs matching is is like setting aside, you know, staff time and hours through uh, the DLTA grants. Yep. Um, so I think they're hoping to have this wrapped up by the end of this calendar year. Um, so the consultant would have, you know, almost a full year to work on it, but I think they're, they're thinking that it would be much faster than that. Yeah. Well, this is a good time of year to get out to those places since everything's kind of frozen up and whatnot and exactly. not overgrown. So cool. cool. I'm look, looking forward to hearing more about that as we, as we move forward. Oh, okay. well, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty exciting, actually. Uh, all right. Historical Commission election. We don't really have any officers. I mean, you know, we have the chair. And uh, I mean, I'm looking for somebody that if somebody could take notes during the meetings, it would be tremendously helpful. I don't mind doing the minutes, but, you know, it's like trying to do everything is a little, little much. Uh, and I'm, I'm great at procrastinating. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> makes it so much easier to just say heck with it so if, if somebody would like to take that over i don't mind being here uh again if you want me if you don't then find somebody else i'm open to that too don't all speak at once i was gonna, I was gonna propose that maybe we could rotate taking notes because That's, that would be fine i've been lousy at attendance right recently and i'm hoping that i may have gotten that straightened out and i know that maybe that would allow for make it less onerous for yes yeah. Or, or, yeah, yeah. Um, i mean me I'm well, you know it, it's it's helpful that it's on youtube now so i can go back and re listen to the meeting and and kind of pick up things that i may have missed the first time around or even then though i'm kind of like going do i want to put that in the minutes i don't think i have to <laughs> try to keep it simple but uh that would be helpful that's that's all i'm saying and yeah, i suggest we, we we can share the yeah the note taking and and that we keep you as chair mike okay sounds good everybody really likes that idea well, i want to put it to vote i don't think we need to vote do we no Thank unanimous you. just continue continue on the way it is uh okay i, I did put together just the, just the dates for the uh the meeting schedule for this year uh, so basically the second Wednesday uh, of the month, I can just email you all the dates so you'll have them in front of you. It, I mean, obviously <laughs> it's flexible so we can change them at any, you know, anytime we need to, but I figure it'd be a little, a little more helpful to actually kind of know it's coming up, even though it's not that hard to figure out what the second Wednesday of the month usually is, but just to see the date on a list is, is always, you know, Very Oh Yeah. <laughs> Because I'll tend to even, you know, to forget and have something else come up and go, oh, that's great. And then go, oh, you know, now I got to work around this. I so, uh, want to appreciate the effort. It, it will be helpful. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, and uh, we've come to the end of the agenda. So this, the next meeting, looking at my list, would be February 9th. <laughs> Don't even have to go to a calendar now. <laughs> Uh, 6.30 still work for everybody? That's yeah. about the earliest to make it, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's, yeah, that's fine with me. It gives me a little time to you know, get home and eat and whatnot. Okay, so February 9th at 6.30? Here, most likely. <laughs> um, they're in a here in our living rooms <laughs> there's a slight chance we'll be we'll have moved to google meet by then um wow, wow. Uh, the slight, you slight retrained <laughs> yeah. um my the last i had heard is that it's going to be sometime between now and the end of march um we'll be switching over so my um as soon as i know more about that we'll get everybody trained um it should not be significantly different 
um, it'll be a little bit easier and that anybody can schedule the meetings and anybody can start the meetings. Oh, okay. Very good. All right. And on that note, can we have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. I second. John. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm not going to call roll. It's only three of you there. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everybody.